There we go. Proverbs chapter 9, verse number 9. The Bible says, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure do love you. Thank you for the wonderful day that you've given to us. Lord, we come and pray one more time and ask you to bless the service. Please help us, Heavenly Father, Lord, tonight that, we, uh, Lord, you would just speak through your word. Teach us something, Lord, that we can use and apply to our lives. Bless, Lord, our country, Lord. We, uh, Lord, as we're reminded uh, from Brother Gibbs, Lord, about how that, Lord, it's, uh, Lord, a need that we pray for our country. Lord, we just ask you, please, would bless America. Help us, Lord, as Christians to hold up the gospel and hold up the light. And, Lord, be a, be a testimony, Lord, to this lost world. And, Heavenly Father, Lord, would you help us to be soul winners. Help us to reach people, Lord, to love you, Lord, but to love people and reach them and bring them, Lord, to you, Jesus, and help them. Uh, Lord, come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. May all that we do and say honor and glorify you. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. i got to get used to being one-handed again. All right. Well, on Wednesday nights, we were studying back to the basics. Uh, as you know, we ended that series uh, two weeks ago, and then we are starting in a new series of uh, Wednesday night Bible studies. I try to take the Wednesday night time and, and teach principles, teach uh, lessons that we can learn and so we're going to start a new series called God's Principles of Service because as we talked in, in, uh, in our Back to the Basics series, how that we, we, we get saved, we get baptized, we've joined the church, we are start tithing. And then the last part was about uh, serving the Lord, our service to the Lord. When you, if you've been in church for any length of time, uh, and, and as a Christian, when you, when you begin to get into church, you begin to serve the Lord, Anything you do for the Lord, whether it's even just simply being faithful to church, is serving God. Sometimes we look at, well, I'm not serving the Lord if I'm not uh, a pastor or if I'm not the usher or if I'm not. God, it, it, just in simply being faithful to the Lord and, and tithing and, be, and being faithful to what God has asked you to do and even being a soul winner, all of that is you serving God. So don't look at it as you're not a servant of God if you're not a teaching Sunday school or if you're not holding a position. Sometimes we focus too much on the positions in a church than we do on just serving the Lord. And so as we serve God and as you, as you, you serve the Lord with your life and, and on an individual and on a daily basis, there are principles of service that I believe that can help us uh, in, in, uh, in our service to the Lord. Like for tonight, we're going to talk about being teachable being teachable. This is a principle of service that uh, this is the first one we're going to cover tonight, how that when we serve the Lord, we have to be teachable. See, because not anybody can serve the Lord. God, God says anybody can come and anybody can serve God. But as you serve God, sometimes it's not, ha it's not uh, what you do to serve the Lord, but sometimes it's how you serve the Lord. Uh, sometimes it's your attitude. Amen. Sometimes it's how we handle things. Every person, when you've been in church and when you've served the Lord for any length of time, you're going to come across situations where you, uh, uh, you, you know, things come up and you, you lose your temper. Or maybe you, uh, you think, uh, oh, I blew it there. And uh, these are principles to help us. And uh, we, when you come across sometimes, uh, I know in Bible college, I've, been, I've had to uh, be teachable where I've had a uh, uh, my my uh, college professor look at me and tell me why on earth did you do that? And I said, I don't know, sir. <laughs> it was just a, a, a brain lapse. I, I made a mistake, and I had to learn. I had to learn this principle very quickly about being teachable. And these things can help us on an individual, on a daily basis, not only in our serving the Lord, but when you're out in the world, when you're in a workplace, when you're doing something for the Lord, uh, in, in when or when you're just helping being as a good teenager or being a young uh, being a young person all of these principles can apply to these areas so we're going to talk tonight about being teachable a uh, principle of service here the question that we have to ask ourselves is am i really teachable it's one thing to serve the lord it's another thing to when you serve god to ask god to help you to be teachable because god wants to teach his children in your service for God, while you serve the Lord, God is trying to teach you something. God is trying to continually teach us something. Sometimes, as Christians, even as maybe uh, some pastors, and I hope that, I pray that I've never this way, but there are some pastors where they think they've grown beyond being taught. And God is telling us one of the principles of this, of being teachable, is that you're never too old to learn. You're never so mature in your Christian life to where you're right about everything. 
Sometimes if we're not careful, we can get this mindset to where everyone else is wrong and I'm right. When you cease to learn, you cease to lead. The Bible says, and it's a principle, when you cease to learn, when you cease to be then you hinder your ability to lead. Because even in leading, even as me as a pastor, I have to continually be teachable. The Lord continues to teach me principles from the Word of God. The Lord continues to teach me principles from other great men of God that are older than I am. But you never stop learning. So you have to remember in serving God, when you get into serving the Lord and you get into doing something for the Lord, you never stop learning. Whether you're a Bible college graduate, whether you're working a secular job, or whether you've had years and years of experience and you're the most seasoned veteran in the ministry, you'll always have to be teachable. So remember, to, we have to stay humble in our service. This is the first thing. It was, as we see there, Proverbs 9, verse 9, give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. So you see, a wise man, when you give him instruction, he takes it and he becomes even wiser. A wise man doesn't look at that and say, well, I already learned that, or, well, I, I know better than that. I don't really need that. And a, a wise man, when he's given instruction, he increases in wisdom. But then we keep reading. It says, teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. And so you see how God compares when you're teachable, you're wise. When you're teachable, you're just. And so God wants us to understand to remain teachable in our service for the Lord. Being teachable means that you're willing to learn from others, even if it means you're wrong. It means you're able and willing to learn. You're capable of being taught. God is always trying to teach us, but we must be prudent enough to see when God is doing that. Uh, one illustration of uh, somebody being teachable is Job. Job had to, had to be teachable. The Lord put him through a trial, and Job didn't quite understand. But when you read uh, through the book of Job, he teach, uh, Job shows us that there are things that, we'll, that, that, he had to, that we can learn from. Job 6.24, and you don't have to open and read these, but in Job 6.24, he says, uh, he shows that we're taught by trials. You're going to have to learn to be teachable because God may try to teach you by a trial in your life, like Job. God may bring you into a position where you don't understand why God brought you there, and you don't understand why that is that way, but God's trying to teach you something. I know of many men of God that have gone through hardships and difficulties with their children. Many men of God that have gone through difficulties in their, in their finances. Many men of God that have gone through difficulties in a church. All of those things God brought to teach them. Dr. Lee Robertson is a great man. He talked about how that God took away a child as a baby. And Dr. Robertson didn't quite understand it. But he looks back later in life now and he sees God was trying to teach him something that he would never have learned had God not brought that difficulty in his life. In Job 12, 7 and 8, Job tells us that we're also taught by nature. So God's trying to be, want you to be teachable because God teach you by nature itself. 1 Corinthians eleven fourteen talks about that. It says, doth not nature itself teach you? So even nature will, try to, will, will teach you lessons that God wants you to learn. Uh, Job 27, 11, God, uh, God may teach you by his own hand. God may bring his own hand into your life where you'll see the evidence of God and God's blessings and God's power on your life. That can also teach you. Job 32.7 says we're taught by experience. It may be your experience or others' experience, but experience will teach you. Going through life, just simply living life, will teach you lessons. Uh, in Job 34, 31, and 32, we're taught by punishment. Amen. Most of us have learned that way. I know I learned plenty that way. <laughs> My parents punished me. Amen. They gave me a good whooping. It taught me quite a bit. Taught me real quick. But Job, and Job talks about how that with the Lord, we're chastised. God punishes us for doing wrong, and we're taught by punishment. And then in Psalms 34, 11 is one more verse that I wanted to give you there. It's, it talks about how that you're taught by men of God. David taught his children. And so all of those verses are to show you that God wants you to be teachable because God is going to bring things into your life that he wants you to learn from. It may not necessarily always be your pastor. It may not necessarily always be the word of God in time that you spend, although God will use those things. But God will use 
things. God will use trials. God will use his own hand. God will use your experience. God will punish you. God will do all of these things because he wants you to remain teachable because God wants you to continually learn. Why is it important to be teachable? It is important because God is preparing you for his will for your future. We have to remain teachable because God has something he wants you to do. And God is preparing you. But if you get to the point to where you tell God that, God, I, I, I've learned enough. I no longer need to learn. Then God cannot continue to prepare you for what he has you to do. A person once said, experience teaches only the teachable. Everything that we know, we learn from someone else. Everything that you've learned over your lifetime, you've learned from somebody else. No one is the, a self-made man. Although I, we like to be, we like to say, I, I, I'm a self-made man. But everybody learns from somebody else. Being teachable is more than being willing to learn. It is actively looking for opportunities to learn. So again, all of those things that God will bring into your life, trials, nature itself, experience, punishment, men of God, the word of God, all of those things God will bring into your life because God wants you to actively look for opportunities to learn. Because teachable doesn't mean that you're just willing to learn. It means that you're looking for God to teach you, saying, God, what can I do? What can I learn? How can I be more of a Christian? How can I do more for God? How can I be more effective? How can I be a better wife? How can I be a better husband? How can I be a better pastor? And you constantly look for ways that God's trying to teach you. We need to start with being teachable. We need to ask God to help us be teachable. Psalms 86, 11 says, Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. You need to start with just asking God to help you be teachable. We'll get to the outline here in just a moment. This is just kind of some introductory things. But we need to ask God to help us be teachable. You say, you know, Pastor, I want to be teachable. Well, then ask God. Say, God, I want to be teachable. Maybe uh, uh, by... by, by uh, Maybe your personality, maybe you're not very teachable. Some, some are naturally stubborn. You say, well, you know, I've developed a stubborn attitude. Ask God to help you. Amen. God will help you. God will help you be teachable. Uh, I know I've had to do that and ask the Lord, say, Lord, I don't really want to learn right now, but if there's a lesson I need to learn, teach me. <laughs> Sometimes you have to ask God. Ask God to help you. Amen. Never, never underestimate the power of prayer. Amen. And the next thing. View everyone and everything as your teacher. So Proverbs 19.20 says, Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Everyone and everything can teach you something. Maybe that's not always a good lesson, but maybe they, maybe they don't always teach you what you should do, but you can learn and say, well, that's probably what I shouldn't do. Everyone can teach you something. Every person that you meet uh, come with the mindset when you shake somebody's hand that, that they can teach you something. As a, as a pastor, sometimes uh, I, I want to always keep the mindset. Dr. Hiles wrote, and he said how that when he shook somebody's hand, he always had the mindset that they can, they can teach him something he's never learned before. Because they've been through areas of life he's never been. They maybe have a skill that he doesn't have. They've thought, they, they do things he doesn't do. And so every person you meet, every time you shake somebody's hand, think they can teach me something. And then everything that God allows into your life. See, what happens is sometimes when things come into our life, we develop a, a, a hard spirit, a hard attitude. But God says maybe something that God brings to you, God wants you to learn from. So view everyone and everything as your teacher. Next, to be teachable, you need to be a good listener. Proverbs 1.5 says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. So to be, good, to be teachable, we've got to be good listeners also. That's why it's important to teach our children to listen. That's why it's important to teach our children to not... Uh, I remember when my dad, uh, I would, uh, we would go out to eat, and boy, let me tell you, I was the worst. Out of all our kids, I was, uh, my mom and dad told me I was the worst. We would go out to eat. We'd have a special uh, speaker come in and preach, and we would take them out to eat afterwards. And my dad would tell me, children are to be seen and not heard. And he would say, don't speak. When the adults are talking, 
don't interrupt. I'd say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He'd go, Richard? I'd say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, it always singled me out for some reason. I'd be like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'd get there, and as soon as we got there, boy, I wanted to talk. <laughs> I did. I tell you, I'll confess now. I loved to talk. And I would ask questions because I, I always liked to learn. I don't know if anybody's like that where you just like to learn, so you just ask crazy questions, and people get tired of you asking questions and say, quit asking me questions. You're like, well, I don't know how to do that. Dad would do that. He'd get frustrated at me. He'd say, quit asking me questions. And uh, so I would be sitting there. We'd have the special speaker, and uh, Dad would, Mom and Dad would sit here, the special speaker would sit here and his wife, and then I would sit right by mom because I wanted to be as close as I could to that person because they wouldn't let us sit on the other side because they knew we'd be in trouble. And so I'd sit right by mom, and I would just start gabbing. And dad would look down at me, <coughs> and I, I knew when we got home I was in trouble. <laughs> I had many a whoopings to learn to be a good listener. He said, listen. And, but he was trying to teach me because I learned – if I would listen to the conversation, I learned more than just simply talking, 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 talking. So I had to learn that lesson, and uh, I learned it very well, very quickly. But be a good listener. Sometimes you can learn more by listening to wise men than you can by asking questions. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. This hearing also means that not only that you listen to what other people say, but you listen to when instruction is given to you. Because, see, a lot of people hear, but they're not doers. The Bible talks about be a, not a hearer, but a doer. Sometimes it falls on deaf ears to where we're given instruction, but it goes in one ear and out the other. God says be a good listener to where we don't only hear, but we attain. When wise counsel is given to us, whether it's through preaching, whether it's through the Word of God, whether it's through a parent, whether it's through a pastor, whoever it may be, when we're given wise counsel, we hear and we apply it. Sometimes that's the hardest part to do. Next, we need to be good listeners, but learn to ask questions. There is a good time to ask questions. Now, it's not all the time. Amen. Dad taught me that very well. But learn to ask questions if there are problems. Sometimes being teachable means that you hear something and you're confused and you need to just ask a question to get it straightened out. Sometimes when I was in school, I didn't understand what the teacher taught. <coughs> Excuse me. So what did I have to do? Can you explain that again? Sometimes it's the same way in church, when we're in church work. We get to doing things, we get to serving God, and we, maybe we hear a message preached, or maybe we uh, see something from the Word of God in our, own, in our Bible reading, and we think, well, you know, Lord, I don't quite understand that. Ask God. Say, God, can you teach me that? Ask the pastor. Pastor, uh, what does this mean? How can we, what, what, am I, what am I missing? How can I be more teachable? Next, be willing to admit to error. Being teachable means that you're willing to say, you know, I was wrong. Amen. Sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. Amen. I know for me it was. Uh, I never liked to admit I was wrong. Of course, I've not been wrong really yet. So I've not had, never mind, I'm just kidding. Uh, my wife, had, she gets, she, she gets on to me for that. But I have to be willing to admit I'm wrong. Amen. Sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, but that's the only way to be teachable. You're never teachable if you're never willing to say, you know, I was wrong about that. If you're always right, then you're not teachable. God says you have to be willing to say, Proverbs 29, 20 verse 9 says, Who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. In other words, as long as you live in this flesh, you're going to be wrong sometime. As long as you're a sinner, you're going to have times where you're wrong. Be willing just to be humble enough to say, you know, Lord, sir, mom, dad, I was wrong. That's the first step. Amen. To being teachable. Being willing to say, I don't know everything. Next, plan for opportunities to learn from others. Plan for opportunities to learn from others. Proverbs 20 verse 5 says, Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Sometimes you plan for opportunities. For instance, uh, at the church, I try to plan for when maybe down the road a special speaker can come that knows more about a certain subject than I do. Those are planned opportunities that we have to maybe learn 
more about finances, more about missions, more about the Word of God, all of those things. Sometimes you have to plan for opportunities to learn from other people. If there's somebody that knows something, maybe a little more than you do, uh, to have a planned time where you sit down, you talk to them. Plan for those opportunities that you learn from others. Then spend time reading. 1 Timothy 4.13, Till I come, give attendance to reading. 1 Timothy 2.14 says, Till I come, give attendance to reading. To be teachable, we've got to spend time reading. Whether it's reading the Word of God, whether it's reading a book that's, uh, that uh, sometimes you can read good books from great men of God, good pastors. I know uh, I've been reading a book by Brother Hiles uh, on, on, on uh, marriage is a, is a commitment and talking things uh, about that. I've been reading, I try to read one book a month if I can and try to stay reading. You know why? Because if you read from other people, you learn, you learn what, they, what, they've, what God's taught them. Next, we've got to keep moving. I'm trying to get, get through all of it. Uh, next, accept reproof. Proverbs 9, verse 9 says, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. To be teachable, we have to learn to be willing to accept reproof. When somebody tells us something, and, we've been, and we're wrong, and they tell us, and we have to be willing to say, yes, sir. I know I've had to do that plenty of times. Dad, uh, uh, growing up or even in Bible college, I've had to accept reproof, and I've had to accept plenty of it. Even my wife tells me, hey, hey, you're doing that wrong. No. But, you know, we have to learn to accept reproof. Be willing to say, yes, sir. Be willing to say, yes, ma'am. Be willing to, when somebody reproves you, it's just like it, at a workplace. When you do something wrong and the boss comes, uh, uh, shape up. You're not doing that right. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, and the hardest thing about working, and I remember uh, working at the hospital, hardest thing for me about working with some people is that they never, they never accept reproof. When, they, when you tell them, uh, you know, you're not quite doing that right, uh, they get mad at you, blow up, tell you, you don't know what you're talking about. I've been working here for three months. I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I, I always hated having that happen. Amen. Uh, you always like to work with people that when you tell them, say, ah, you know, maybe, and then they say, okay, I'm sorry. Things like that. All right. Now, moving on. A Bible example. This is where we get into our, uh, our, our outline there. A Bible example of one who is teachable was Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3 through 10, and then we'll Kings chapter 3. 3 through 10, just very simple, quick outline to give you somebody to study. A Bible example of one who is teachable. Uh, this taught me uh, as I was uh, studying it as well. I, I kind of think of myself as Solomon. Solomon took, uh, took the kingdom from David, his father. David was the king. David's now passed away. And what did Solomon ask the Lord? He asked God for wisdom. And uh, notice here Solomon uh, in verse number 7, he says, And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I, not, I know not how to go out or come in. You know, I put myself in Solomon's shoes. I said, Lord, I am but a little child, I feel like. Amen. And, uh, uh, but Solomon, we see here that he was asking God to help him to learn how to run a kingdom. You imagine uh, uh, being Solomon's age, uh, we're not quite sure exact how, how old he was, but Solomon here gives a reference that he's but a little child. He's very young, uh, maybe possibly a teenager still, maybe possibly in his younger 20s. Uh, we know probably not older than 25, and he's, uh, he says he's been given the kingdom that's, uh, that the, the people there in verse 8, it says that there are so many that they can't even be numbered. So he's got to rule a kingdom that, is, is more than number than even America itself. People cannot be numbered. They can't even be counted. There's so many people. And Solomon's been given this great responsibility. And so the Lord asks him and says, Solomon, what can I give you? As we see there, he says, ask what I shall give thee in this chapter here. And we're just really running through because I want to uh, get through all of this. He, God comes to him in verse number 5 and says, ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon says, I need wisdom. Now, Solomon could have asked God for anything. God is God, amen. He could have given Solomon anything. He could have asked God for a new Porsche. Man, he could have asked God for a Lamborghini. He could have asked God for, you know, a new house. He could have asked God for a new boat. But he said, Lord, I, I need wisdom. Lord, I, I need wisdom. And God was pleased. The Lord was pleased with Solomon's answer. Because Proverbs says that wisdom is better than gold. Wisdom's better than fine silver. 
So being teachable means that you understand the priority and the price that wisdom is. Being teachable means that you want to learn because you understand it's more important to be wise and learn than it is to have a big house. It's more impor important to learn from the Word of God and understand what God says than it is to drive a fancy car. Because wisdom at the end of your life is more profitable than all the gold and riches can buy. Because you can't buy wisdom. You can't buy with all this stuff. You can't use all of your money at the end of your life to buy you a profitable life. See, wisdom is blessed by God. Wisdom will bring profit to your life. Wisdom will increase your days, the book of Proverbs says. Wisdom will lengthen. Wisdom will bring honor. Wisdom will bring you satisfaction, joy. All of these things wisdom and understanding can bring you. And so being teachable is so important because it gives you wisdom that gives you profit. All the wealthy men in the world won't be able to buy what you will have at the end of your life if you're simply teachable. Solomon pleased the Lord, so God gave him wisdom. But what made Solomon teachable? 1 Kings 3.3, 3, num number one. And Solomon loved the Lord. He loved the Lord. What made him teachable? He loved God. The first step that helps you to be teachable is having a love for God. You ever notice how that people that are in sin or you get backslidden from the Lord, the first thing you do is you stop learning? You stop reading your Bible? You stop coming to church? When people get backslidden on God or people uh, begin to uh, uh, develop a hard heart toward the Lord, the first thing that they do is they stop learning. You ever notice that? I know, I, I know that there's been times where I was not uh, the Christian I should be. Amen. We can all raise our hand and say we've been there. And the first thing I did was stop learning from God. I stopped learning in the services. The services became boring. I stopped paying attention. I no longer wanted to hear the outlines. You no longer want to hear the Word of God preached for that moment in time because your heart's hard toward the Lord. Then you come and you get right with God and you weep and cry. Oh. And then the next service, boy, it's like a fresh meal. You know why? A love for God. People that never get anything out of church, I'll tell you why they don't love God. Because if you don't love God, you don't love the Lord. Or you don't love His Word. Amen. So love the Lord. It starts with a love for God. We have to keep a, a tender heart with a love for the Lord. Happens to pastors too. I pray that this would never happen to me, but I have to keep myself in check because a pastor can develop even a hard heart. We have to keep our love for the Lord so tender. Amen. Number two, he recognized those who had taught him. He loved the Lord, and then he recognized those who taught him. 1 Kings 3, 6 says, And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. He recognized his father David. David taught Solomon everything he knew. David sat with Solomon, taught him, and Solomon sat at the feet of a great king, a great man. And God taught him, and, or, and, and David taught his son. Recognize those who teach you. Recognize those uh, and, and give them honor. Amen. Sometimes, you know, there are those people in your life that have taught you that have been a great influence. Recognize those people and continue to learn from them. Don't stop learning. This is something that teenagers get in trouble with because they don't recognize those who've taught them everything, and then they develop a hard heart, and then they run away from mom and dad. Mom and dad have taught them everything their whole life. And then the world gets a little gleamy in their eye, and they turn their, mom, turn their backs on them. We can do that to the Lord. We can do that to the pastor. Recognize those who teach us and continue to learn from them. Love them and continue to learn from their life. Sometimes even people have passed on, even that are, even that are dead, and we can continue to learn from their faithfulness, learn from their love for the Lord. Next. He admitted his inability. 1 Kings 3, 7. 1 Kings 3, 7. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. He admitted to God. He said, God, I can't do it. God, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what to do. 
That's the first thing we're going to have to do to be teachable. Get on our knees and beg and tell God, I don't know. I need help. He said, I know not how to go out or come in. Amen. It's not about what you know. It's about who you know. And you have God. Ask God. Admit that you don't know. Admit that you need help. Amen. Next, uh, very simple and just following a line here, 1 Kings 3, 9, he asked God to teach him. So he admitted his inability, and then he asked God to teach him. God says you have not because you ask not. Amen. Ask God for wisdom. I love that verse in the book of James that talks about that God giveth to all men liberally. What's he talking about? Wisdom. God gives wisdom to all men liberally and upbraideth not. And you don't have it because you just don't ask. We can ask God for the wisdom that we need, and God will teach us if we're just simply willing to ask. And then last, he realized that his task was bigger than he was. Last thing, and we're done. First Kings 3, 8 and 9. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? He realized that this task that God had given to him, Solomon had to judge, a peop- had to judge this people, and he knew he couldn't do it, and he realized without God it wouldn't get done. The biggest thing to remain teachable is to realize that what God has given you to do, you can't do without him. It can't be done. That's why it's so important to be teachable. That's why it's so important to learn from the word of God. Learn from the messages. Learn from reading your Bible and praying. Why? Because God is trying to give you the wisdom to do a task that you alone cannot do. We need help. Amen. Jesus said, without me, he can do Nothing. Amen. When you try to serve God on your own, you'll fail. It'll never work. When you try to face life on your own, you'll fail. It'll never work. You think, well, look at all those people that are so successful. But my friend, the Bible is very clear that wealth and riches does not constitute success. Kobe Bryant's successful, but he lost his family. I'd rather have a family and be wealthy. See, success in the world's eyes is different from success in God's eyes. And to get true success, you're going to have to go to God to get it. And you're going to have to have God's help. Amen. That's why the world is constantly looking for all these get-rich-quick schemes or uh, how, to, how to do this or how to do that. And, they, and psychologists Offices are full with people trying to get advice and how do, how do I do better, this or that. You know what? It's all found in God's Word. Every bit of it. We just have to let God teach us. But America, what we've done is we, as we've seen in this last week, we've pushed God out of everything. And now our country's a mess. Why? We're not getting a hold of God. God brings true success. Amen. Every other country... Uh, And when you go outside of America, they envy America. And you know what they think of America as? A Christian nation. You go outside to South Africa. I took a trip one time, and then we'll be done. I took a trip to South Africa and Botswana, and uh, we would go to the public schools and give the gospel. And they they would tell us they want to be like America. And they want the Bible because they say America is successful because America is a Christian nation. That's what they tell you. And you think, how sad. If you actually live there, you'd realize how unchristian we're becoming very quickly. And you know what we're doing? We're going to become a third world country, and all of these nations are going to rise and be successful. You know why? They want God. They know where success comes from. Well, as a Christian, what about us? We want success. Well, how are we going to be successful if we don't remain teachable to the Word of God? We don't let God continue on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, teach us. That's why it's great when, you know, to come to church and say, God, teach me something. So I always pray, and I ask the Lord to help me give a message that would help teach us a truth. Why? Because we have to constantly learn. That learning feeds us, amen, and we become greater Christians for the Lord. So be teachable. In your service for God, one of the most important things is to remain teachable, amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for the wonderful day that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the lesson tonight. Lord, how, Lord, I learn from it uh, every time, Lord, I teach this lesson. And every time, Lord, I, I 
go through these verses and remind myself, Lord, about being teachable and constantly letting you, Lord, teach me through your word as your man of God. Lord, please help each and every one of us, Lord, to be teachable Christians. That, Lord, when maybe something we don't quite understand, maybe there's something, Lord, that uh, th- that goes on, that, Lord, we, we've never heard before, maybe that's new to us, that, Lord, would we not develop a, a, a hard heart, or, Lord, would we not develop a, 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 hard to- a hard heart towards you, but, Lord, that we would love you more and, and desire, Lord, for you to teach us. Lord, I know how many times, God, I've had to just humble myself, Lord, and allow you to teach me and allow you to uh, show me, Lord, what you want me to do. And, Lord, thank you for a great mom and a dad that, Lord, taught me to love you, God, above all else, and that, Lord, to remain teachable to you. May we do that, Lord, for our children's sake. May we do that, Lord, for uh, souls so we can be a better soul winner, so we can, Lord, teach our children, Lord, and, and, and desire, Lord, for them to continue to learn from thee as well. Lord, we love you. Bless as we go home. Thank you, Lord, for the service tonight. Pray that it was a blessing, Lord. Bring us back safely on Sunday. Lord, help as those that, Lord, we're praying for them to come Sunday. May souls be saved, lives be changed. Lord, people are going to be baptized. And, Lord, just a great Sunday that we have planned. Would you not allow the devil, Lord, to hinder that? Would you please give us, Lord, a great day? May we love you and serve you, Lord, like never before. In Jesus' name, amen.